This is Bill Hamburger again, Beyond the Gates today, and today we're in this fabulous Niguel Botanical Preserve. It's located in Crown Valley Park in Laguna Niguel. It's about 18 acres of themed gardens with some 2,000 plant series and four miles of walking trails, just gorgeous trails. And there's an elaborate stone labyrinth, an ornate gazebo in a classical style, and a formal garden. And right now, we're going to go meet Monty McDivitt, who is the president of the preserve, and he's going to take us on a tour. Monty, thanks for joining us here today in this beautiful garden. What are we standing in front of? Absolutely. Thanks for coming today. We're standing near our, our main entrance, and right behind us is this beautiful bridge right above our meadow. Now, this right before the meadow is uh, where you can see Russian sage blooming, but during the winter time, we have this orange flower that pops up. It comes up from a bulb, and it's just a sea of orange all the way up to the bridge. The bridge, has, uh, we decorate it for Christmas time, and lots of family photos taken there, a lot of Christmas card photos sure. taken there. And this is probably our, our main feature at the bottom of the preserve. And as you climb, there's so much more to see. Let's go. Um, first question is about the preserve. How long has it been here? I mean, maybe the dinosaurs were here first, but how long has it been organized and who organized it first? That is true. You know, it started in 1981 with a group of uh, people who started actually a vegetable garden nearby. Wow. Started as a... Uh, just a vegetable garden with people renting slots or, or spaces. And the uh, our critters got in the vegetable so much that one by one, they gave up. And that uh, site was taken over one by one by our resident Rose Lady. And all of a sudden, she was the only one left. So the gophers won at first? The gophers won at first, that's for sure. How big is the preserve? The preserve is 18.1 acres. Wow spread over um, the hill right above Crown Valley Park. We're actually inside Crown Valley Park. We share the same uh, parking lot with them. Now, we're standing at one of the, the uh, exhibits here in the preserve. This is uh, a beautiful iron butterfly, it looks like, right? Absolutely. This was donated by KCET uh, about 20 years ago, and they donated these same metallic butterflies all over Orange County to Orange County cities, encouraging them to put them in their parks. This is the only one in Laguna Niguel, and it was hand painted by children from McDowell, McDowell Elementary. Mm. Now you've got 18 acres here. Is it um, is it free to get in? Absolutely. We have no uh, admittance fee. We're open from dawn to dusk, 365 days a year. Wow, this is this is just one incredible place, and uh, let's go see some more. And the lady who was ro growing roses took their plot over to, at the end, it was just left with roses. So when uh, we developed the garden, the botanical preserve around her, this actually became our resident rose garden. So this was actually the first area of the preserve because the, the rodents got in and killed everything. Um, and um, how long is it, I mean, is this something you have to take care of almost every day, or is it... We actually have a volunteer that actually lives in Laguna Woods who actually takes care of a rose garden for us. His mm. name is Kent Souther. Hey, here's, here's something serious. Um, uh, there, the, the maintenance in something like this has got to be incredible. How does it get watered? Well, we are actually, the whole preserve is actually on reclaimed water, and that's gray water. It's not potable water or drinkable. But the whole preserve, 18 acres, is on this very economical gray water. And uh, in particular, the rose garden is watered by drip. Um, it's very important to water roses at the base versus getting their leaves wet. Monty, where are we heading now? We're actually headed up to the labyrinth, but we're actually walking through the Citizen of the Year Grove right now. Why is it snowing? The snowing is from these magnificent crepe myrtle trees over us. They're in their peak bloom season right now, and these are just magnificent. They're crepe myrtle variety notches. Now, you mentioned the Citizens of the Year. How does one become the Citizen of the Year? Actually, it's... Uh, picked from a, the previous winners that they pick a new winner every year to honor for their volunteer work in the city and they've done not just one year volunteer work they've done decades of volunteer work i noticed one of the markers was you back there were you one of the first volunteers i was actually one of the last volunteers selected most recently um, i've worked here in the Miguel botanical preserve for over 10 years mm. and it was quite the surprise and honor when i won in 2017. Let's continue. All right. I know a lot of people like to take uh, their dogs on hikes. Do you allow that in the preserve? Absolutely. Dogs and dog walkers, they're our best customers. As long as the dogs are on a leash and their owners pick up after them, we have no problem with that at all. What is this view out here? That's phenomenal. Isn't that great? That is Saddleback Mountains. And this uh, labyrinth that we're standing on was built on perpendicular with 
the uh, view of Saddleback Mountains. Little garden trick? It's a little garden trick. So a lot of gardeners will put this in their gardens to uh, create a big surprise around the corner. It keeps the uh, visitor intrigued. So that's where we're going now. Absolutely. Let's head, let's head on. Uh, we were just talking about wedding. So this looks like an altar behind us. What is this? This is our uh, garden gazebo here in the Gelb Botanical Preserve. It's actually, the style is called a garden temple. It has nothing to do with religion, but it's very popular in Romanesque architecture and Greek architecture. It's actually bought, brought over to the United States by our early presidents using uh, that type of uh, architecture. And this actually is a, the emblem for President Madison's gardens around Mount Montpelier. He actually has these covering his wells on his property. Now, I know you're a big Star Trek fan. Is this uh, the reason you came to work here is because I know there's a Star Trek episode. They have something like this. You saw this and said, oh, I got to go volunteer here. Oh, I wish that was the, <laughs> was the truth. You know, I'm a huge Trekkie fan, and I, they use all kinds of classic architecture in all of those series. But no, we, this was actually installed about four or five years ago. I was president at the time, and we raised money over two or three years to pay and install this. It was a very costly feature, but one I think turned out really well. Yeah, the, the site out here is just gorgeous. Perfect place for weddings. You know, it actually is. But we hope to host weddings one day. We don't actually host weddings right now. Now we're coming from the labyrinth over here. Are there any um, organized events that uh, come in here to the preserve? Actually, we don't allow or sponsor organized events right now. Uh, we hope to uh, have organized events and sponsored events and weddings here in the near future. Hmm. Now, what are we walking into here? We're walking into Gazebo Green, actually. It's uh, it's a plaza with DG on the bottom, so it can handle a lot of foot traffic. It's surrounded by a, a lot of greenery, a lot of uh, white and purple flowers, with a still a majestic view of Saddleback to one side. It is beautiful, but what's DG? I'm sorry, DG is depo decomposed granite. It's a very popular uh, walking material that a lot of botanical gardens use. Monty, thanks for your time today. I appreciate it. Now, let's go see what's happening in Susan's world. Rico Cucina and Wine Bar is your neighborhood destination that has ties to recipes that stem from Boston, New York, Chicago, and of course, Italy. New owners, Jordan and Craig Mulligan, who've been in the restaurant business since 1998. And they have taken on the mission of making Rico new and better. And they have remodeled the dining room and wine bar with a modern and combined with old school harmony of, of design. And now here to tell us more about Brico is Jordan Mulliken. Jordan, I'm so happy to have you with us today, and I am just fascinated to hear more about the history of this place. Tell us, tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, so we, we just took over as owners uh, June 1st. Uh, Brico has been around for uh, several years. Okay. Uh, but we uh, got in here June 1st, and we just started remodeling right away and try to make some some changes my gosh june 1st that's just a couple of months it's, it's been a whirlwind and you've made huge changes already so tell me a little bit more about it now um what what tell me first about your background in uh the restaurant business you and your co-partner so my dad that's your dad uh, he opened up a restaurant uh, that was chicago style uh doing a time beef sandwiches doing pizza, Chicago hot dogs, so more of a fast oh. casual type of uh, place. And I was 12 years old when he opened that. I worked in there uh, on after school, at night. Oh, so this is in your blood. Yeah. Oh. So then gosh. finally after I got out of uh, school uh, at 18, my dad helped me start up another business. He, he closed his um, after about three, four years. So now when I was out of high school, I had worked at the Marriott in the kitchen for a little bit. Okay. I worked at a barbecue restaurant, so I got some experience in, in other restaurants as well. Uh -huh. And I opened up another company called Chicago's Best. Uh -huh. Served a lot of the same things that I grew up doing at my dad's place, sure. uh, which was actually here in Laguna Niguel. It was called uh, Giorgio's of Chicago. Oh my gosh! Yeah, so that is was, that still? It, it's not here anymore. No one took over that restaurant. Yeah, okay. it's actually the same spot that I think a board and brew is at now. Okay. So it's in that Walmart All shopping right. center. Uh, so I kind of got my experience that way. Uh, opened up a place called Chicago's Best, like I was mentioning in Irvine. And I had that for 16 years. 
Wow. So All I right. eventually I changed the name to Ioli, uh -huh. freshly crafted food, uh -huh. and I kind of focused a lot, a little bit more on burgers, um, and really went towards catering as I my business. See. So I got away from the Chicago theme a little bit. Sure and focus on catering. And right. I still have my catering business now that I've brought here and that I'm operating out of uh, this kitchen now. Out of this kitchen. Yeah. So your background is really in more in managing restaurants and, and all that, but you're a chef as well. You, you make up the menus and are often found in the kitchen. Yeah, I, I pretty much, I don't have any technical training of going to school to be a, a chef or a uh -huh. cook, uh, mainly just working in it, right. uh, enjoying other restaurants and learning from what other people do, watching cooking shows. Of course. And kind of just being forced to figure out ways to grow your business, mm -hmm. uh, increase sales, and yeah, absolutely. And it just sounds learn like on the spot. <laughs> you're very good at that, it sounds like. Now, this restaurant, um, uh, Brico, your specialties are pizzas, but you do lots of other things as well, is that right? Yeah, we do uh, salads here, a lot of salads, appetizers, um, and then eventually we're going to change the menu. Um, so right now we're kind of more at the pizzeria and wine bar, and we're going to change it to cucina and wine bar. Okay. And we're going to kind of focus a little bit more on fresh made pastas from what we're doing now. We're going to change up some of the appetizers, kind of focus it a little bit more just on Italian, uh -huh. um, not so much of a Mediterranean flair as well. I see. Now, uh, it, in Italy, of course, there are so many different kinds of pizzas in Italy, from the Sicilian up to the, you know, Tuscan and all that. Do you have a certain type of uh, Italian pizza that you will be doing, or more of a Chicago-style Italian, or? Yeah, so, you know, in Italy, you know, you have more of the Neapolitan-style pizza. Yes. Uh, we're not going to really be doing that here. It's going to be more of like an East Coast-style uh, pizza, uh, same as what the previous owner had here, so we're going to kind of keep that. Okay. But we are going to incorporate a Chicago thin crust pizza, All right. uh, which is something that we're kind of passionate about, that we grew up on, uh, which is uh, square cut. It's oh, not yeah. the pie shaped. All right. And, uh, you know, maybe a couple other things in the future, but that's what we're going to start with. Oh, that sounds okay. And the other dishes you would serve, you're heading towards more fresh pasta, mm -hmm. which would be very nice. Yeah. And um, one of the things that we are kind of incorporating now in our specials. Uh, in the transition is a pappardelle bolognese, Ooh. Uh, which is uh, really delicious. Now, pappardelle is the, the noodle. Is a noodle, yeah. It's more of a, a wide noodle. Thick noodle. Thick noodle uh -huh. uh, with, a, with a pork and beef Oh, that uh, sauce. sounds wonderful. Yeah. Now, these recipes, I mean, the, the, where do those come from? There's, they're just part of your repertoire that you've accumulated over the years. Is that it? And, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that we've kind of built. Um, my dad has also come upon a lot of the recipes as well, right. kind of refining them and okay. trying to figure out what, what tastes the best, at least what we like, uh -huh. and hopefully other people like it as well. Yeah. And tell me about your hours. Are you open all day, every day? Uh, we're open just for dinner, uh, starting just at dinner. four, okay. and then we open till nine, and that's seven days a week. Um, I love the interior and what you're doing, and, and can't wait to see, see what more is coming, but I find the bricks so interesting, and the ceiling as well. Can you tell me a little bit about the bricks? How, how did that work out? Was that here before? Uh, there was no brick here before. Uh, before it was wallpaper that kind of was giving the impression of exposed brick. Uh. And we kind of changed that and we're like, let's put real brick. So this brick that you see on the wall is actually brick from Chicago. Oh, wow. And it's from torn down buildings. So. The brick is actually made into tiles. They shave it oh and gosh. make little tiles out of it and laid as and brick on the wall. Well, Jordan, thank you so much for taking the time to fill us in on this new adventure. And we will definitely be checking back with you. You're practically in our backyard at Laguna Woods. So good luck with everything you have going on. Thank you. I look forward to uh, meeting a lot of uh, people from the area we, in the coming, coming months. We will be here. Thanks again. Thank you. And now, over to you, Bill. Hey, this is Bill Beyond the Gates again. You know, there are few settings in Orange County as idyllic as a 227-acre Laguna Niguel Regional Park. It's right here, right beyond the gates. 
More than 80 acres of open grass, shade trees surround a tranquil lake with abundant fish. And all around the lake, gentle paths wind through the park, picnic areas, playgrounds, and a sense of peaceful well-being are offered to all who visit. And that's what we're doing today is visiting. And uh, right now we're going to talk to Mr. Brian Glenn, who is a park ranger, and he's going to take us on a tour of this beautiful park. Brian, thanks for your time here. I, under, I understand that this is probably the best job you've ever had. It sure is, Bill. It's uh, definitely the best job I've ever had. Why? Well, you, you're sort of a caretaker of the park here, and uh, every day is different. You learn something new every day here, and the people that you meet every day, uh, some of them are park regulars that you mm -hmm. see uh, on a daily basis. How did this park develop in such a suburban area, or just an urban area, really? Well, originally the park was part of a uh, Mexican land grant uh, to okay. Juan Avila in 1842. And Juan named the, the property Rancho Niguel after a local Native American village. And then in 1881, L.F. Moulton purchased the ranch. And later in 1960, the Laguna Niguel Corporation began purchasing uh, portions of the property, which before they came into the picture, the property reached about 21,000 acres in size. Uh, what are the park hours? Park is open uh, from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, depending during, on the season? Depending on the yeah. season. Once uh, winter comes, it'll still open at 7 a.m., but it'll close at 6 p.m. Okay. What is, what is behind us? I see there's a, a lot of playground area. Is there, is there an actual lake here? There is. We do have a 31-acre lake uh, within the park. We also have thousands of trees scattered throughout, so picnic tables, barbecue grills. We have 12 reservable shelters that come equipped with electricity and water. We also have a large group shelter um, for large group events in the park. And all those are reservable. If, if a park visitor would like mm. to make a reservation for one of those shelters, they could do so online at ocparks.com or they could contact our office uh, during the weekdays, Monday through Friday. But let's go see the park. Sounds good to me. Cool. This is a beautiful facility. What's the, the cost of getting in? Well, it's always free to the public uh, to walk into the park or okay. to ride a bicycle into the park. Oh, the only cool. charge is for parking. And during the week, that charge is $3 per vehicle. On the weekends, it's $5 per vehicle. And on holidays, it's $7 per vehicle. Okay. Uh, the, uh, my favorite times of the day to come to the park, no matter the time of season, would probably be early afternoon because it hmm. sort of empties out a little bit and you really have the park more to yourself. More to yourself. Now, what is behind us? I know there's some, uh, is that racquetball or is it pickleball? Yes, so we actually have four lighted tennis courts behind us there and four lighted pickleball courts that were recently uh, opened in 2019. Now, the park was opened in 1973, but we're always looking to make improvements and additions, but we don't want to add too much because we really value the unencumbered open space here in the park. Now, I know in the village, the pickleball is a big thing, and during COVID, uh, our pickleball courts were pretty much closed. Did you see a surge of Laguna Woods We sure did, presence? yes. We, we were a hot spot for pickleball uh, during COVID. Brian, good hike up here. This is great trails. How many trails are there? Well, we have three different trails here at Laguna Niguel Regional Park. Uh, we have our East Lake Trail right here, mm -hmm. and it wraps around the lake, and you could actually do a loop around the lake, which is about two miles in length. Now, people like to bring their dogs on hikes. Are there any restrictions on dogs in the park? There are, Bill. So all dogs do need to be on a leash in all county parks, and the leash can be no longer than six feet in length. What is behind us? Is the actual, is there a name for this lake? There is. So this is Laguna Niguel Lake, otherwise known as Sulphur Creek Reservoir. And it's approximately 31 acres in size with a maximum depth of 32 feet and an average depth of about 12 feet. We do stock it regularly with uh, catfish in the warmer months and trout in the winter months between November and April. Is the fishing only from the shoreline? It is only from the shoreline and the entire west side of the lake, pretty much all of it is open for fishing. You just need a fishing license for the state of California if you're over 16 years of age. We do have two designated fishing areas on the east side of the lake as well. And you're more than welcome to walk around the lake and find a spot that's good for you. Well, I'm beyond the gates now. Brian has brought me up to, is this Kite Hill? It is. This is Kite Hill. It's an extension of the park. Uh, you can access it off of Alicia Parkway here and drive up the paved road that leads up to the hill. And we have a restroom here as well as picnic tables. Is it part of the admission price? It just 
It is in. not. Anyone is, up, is welcome to drive up here for free of admission. Now, what's this height, this hill used for? Well, a lot of people like to walk up and down the hill for exercise. Oh, yeah, um, as we Some did. people come here to watch the sunset or the sunrise. But most people come up here to operate uh, RC planes or drones or model gliders. It's the only area within the Orange County Park system designated specifically for that usage. So you can come up here and fly a drone if you had one. Correct, you could. Yeah, that's cool. Brian, thank you so much for your time here today. I know you're a busy guy maintaining this park and seeing all the people. And uh, again, thanks for your time here today. It was my pleasure. Thank you. Now let's see what's happening in Susan's world. Crown Valley Community Center in Crown Valley Park is a beautiful, newly completed 48,000 square foot multi-use facility. It offers many special purpose rooms such as a dedicated art room, a fitness and dance room, a collaborative tech room, and several more classrooms. It even has a catering kitchen. Now here to tell us more is Parks and Recreation D Director Ron Rivera. Ron, welcome, and I'm happy to have you here today to fill us in on this amazing community center. Can you tell us a little bit about the history of this place? Absolutely, it'd be my pleasure. The Crown Valley Community Center is part of the Crown Valley Park Improvement Projects, which was birthed out of the 2011 needs assessment. This needs assessment developed a strategic plan to improve all the park here in Crown Valley Park. The first part of this project was to improve our beautiful amphitheater and add a spray ground to the park. The second tier was to add the bridge and fix the flooding zone by the bridge. And finally, we have a beautiful Crown Valley Community Center, which is sitting behind me as we speak. Well, this has been a project going on for 10 years. This is most impressive, and that's, that's it. That's it. There's no phase four. Correct. It's At this point, this is the phase. final phase. Well, very, very impressive. Well, um, tell me a little bit about the amphitheater to begin with. Um, it, it's amazing. And how many people does it hold, and how do you use it? We're very proud of our Crown Valley Amphitheater. It can host 2,000 people as part of our summer concert series. So during the summer, on Friday nights and the 4th of July, we host concerts featuring bands from the 80s, 70s, 60s, 90s, and contemporary, and over 2,000 people attend, and they dance on the floors, the sidewalks, in the stands, enjoying this great amphitheater. Oh, that's my kind of place. That is so exciting. But now you said it's just during the summer. That's for our summer programming. Great. During the rest of the year, we have things like our movie series, our fall flicks. Oh. We'll have a big inflatable screen here and we'll show movies for kids, movies for families, and even movies featuring nature programs as well, too. Oh. Also throughout the year, we'll have our Cubs, local Cub Scout groups rent the amphitheater for the Court of Honor. Uh, we'll have our scout teams uh, work, rent the facility as well for other events and programs. And you can even have your wedding ceremony here if you'd like as well, too. Oh, my gosh. It just covers everything. Now, what about uh, in your be beautiful facility? What kind of classes do you offer? And how does one find out about taking a class here? We have pride ourselves in offering a variety of classes here at the Crown Valley Community Center, anywhere from yoga to dance to art to technical classes as well, too, to different clubs we have hosting here as well. And these classes will all be found out about on cityofagunaguel.org, recreation programs where you can sign up and get information for those classes. And also, we have a digital color brochure called Live Well Laguna Niguel that comes out quarterly with information for all our classes, programs, and special events. Oh, it sounds like you cover everything. Um, now, tell me about your swimming pool, the fabulous swimming pool that's in the back. It's uh, most impressive, and is it open to, uh, do people have to make a reservation to use it, or what goes on there? We are very proud of our Laguna Gal Aquatic Center, which has just been renovated as part of the Crown Valley Community Center project. This beautiful pool area now features gorgeous family locker rooms, beautiful locker rooms and restrooms, as well as our gorgeous pool. This pool hosts swimming lessons, open swim, lap swim, dive team, and swim team. It's very important for us that we provide swim lessons for our youth and families for safety as well. Um, currently, for all of our lap swim, reservations are required. You can go on SaveLagunaGal.org to get a lap swim reservation. Our okay. recreation swim is on the weekends for families. Right. You can just drop in and have a recreation swim, cool off during this busy hot summer, yeah. and enjoy their day out here at Crown Valley Park. Oh, how perfect. Now, what about, um, is there a place to grab a bite to eat here, a little restaurant, cafe, or anything? 
We don't have a restaurant cafe, but we have beautiful places to sit. At our Valley Plaza, directly across from our community center, there's tables and chairs where people bring in their picnics and lunches and enjoy an afternoon in the gazebo. Oh, very enticing. Now, people uh, from Laguna Woods, uh, is this open to anyone, or can our, our residents come and visit here, or do they need to have a membership? How does that work? The City of Laguna Gale and the Parks and Recreation prides itself on recreation for everyone. So we invite our friends from Laguna Woods to come on down, enjoy the park. They can either take a class here, go online and find out what classes they can take. They can come here and walk and take a hike in the Gale Botanical Preserve. Mm -hmm. They can come take a swim, get some splash on for themselves, bring their friends and family to our splash pad and get uh, cool in the sun weather, or just enjoy a day in the park for a stroll. It's open for everyone, it's fun for everyone, and more importantly, it brings people together. Oh, tell me a little bit about the YMCA. I notice it's, it's right next to you, and it has just some amazing um, programs offered as well. Now, do, do you work in coordination with the YMCA, or how does that work? Work. The City of Laguna Gale is a proud partner of the YMCA. They are a very great prominent presence here at the Crown Valley Community Park. They host fitness classes, a fitness room, they have basketball classes, basketball teams, they have after school programs for kids, and we'll collaborate together on special events mm -hmm. and work together to provide a variety of recreation programs for the families of Laguna Gale. It's a little bit about the rooms that you have available in the community center, the rooms to rent proud to offer a plethora of rooms to rent here at the Crown Valley Community Center. One of our great rooms is the Crown Valley Ballroom. The Crown Valley Ballroom can hold over 300 people for your wedding, ceremony, oh, celebration, my. or any event you'd like to celebrate with your family. It overlooks Crown Valley Park and has a beautiful view of our beautiful fields. Also, we have the Saddleback Deck. The Saddleback Deck overlooks the Saddleback Valley. It's an outdoor venue that can host a cocktail hour, a small celebration, with a beautiful view of the pool and the amenities around the park as well too. Also, we have various rooms inside the building from our CoLab, which is a high-tech room for small meetings, and also two view rooms, which you can hold smaller meetings in there as well too, and a beautiful art studio. So thank you, Ron, for taking time to fill us in on this amazing facility, and I hope our Laguna Woods residents will be paying a visit to you. It's certainly a very impressive place.